Hello, everybody. <laughs> I did it again. Um, as you can probably tell, I just got up, but I want to do these reviews while I still have these movies fresh in my head. So that is what we are going to do. And then I'm going to watch a movie called The Hangover Games, because I've just been going through my Amazon list and just watching the movies that I think are going to be somewhat interesting to me, I guess. And a lot of it is stuff that's just in my list, but I guess isn't on Prime right now, because they seem to kind of cycle through quite a bit, so I think I'm going to stick with uh, Amazon Prime for a while and watch a bunch of stuff on there, because, uh, yeah, it just, and maybe switch between it and Crave, because there's a lot of stuff on Crave that I want to watch, and oh my god, and then obviously I have my other stuff that I'm going to be doing uh, to um, build back up to where I was with all the promises I kept over the years, and I'm sure there's some in other videos too that I've kept, but or said that I was going to do and probably didn't get around to, but um, it happens. Um, but I'm going to try to keep as many of them as I can anyway. Um, and if I remember any more, I'll write them down right away when I remember them. Uh, so this, today's first review that I'm going to be recording is for the movie Top Gun, uh, because I did go see the second one, Top Gun Maverick, on Saturday night with my dad in theaters. Uh, and it was a packed theater, so I guess we'll see. My dad was telling me about uh, this could be the first movie that makes Tom Cruise $100 million, I think, was the record they were trying to set or whatever for opening weekend. So I guess we'll see um, if it actually did do that, because uh, today is Sunday, so there's still one more night of the weekend, and it came out Thursday, I do believe, and there was like an early release... Um, event on Wednesday night, so I'm assuming they're going to count that too as part of the first weekend release, so I guess we'll see how much money the second one actually ends up making, but that would be pretty cool if it breaks that uh, record as his first film to ever do that. I think if it's not this one, it'll probably be one of the last Mission Impossible movies, or the last, I guess the last, one of the last parts of the Mission Impossible finale. Because uh, they finally have a trailer for that movie ready to go, and that comes out next year. And then I would imagine the second one is probably coming out the year following, so 2024. So really looking forward to the finale of that as well. But that's not really what we're talking about today, but I always like to do something for a little intro because I don't really have a set intro, so I just kind of ramble about. Uh, but this movie is about uh, students of the United States Navy. Um, obviously they're fighter pilots or I believe they called themselves uh, naval aviators uh, was the other one and obviously we have Tom Cruise playing Maverick who seems to be kind of like a reckless pilot. He just does what he feels and doesn't think when he's up in the air because he says if you think up there you're dead. Uh, which is probably true you probably especially if you're in like a dogfight with another plane and so on and so forth. Uh, so his uh, co-pilot is this, um, his best friend, I guess, Goose. Um, so they end up going off to this uh, uh, school, top this Top Gun school, to prove who's the best of the best and who's going to go on this um, mission. Now, what was the actual... I'm trying to remember what the mission was in the first one, because I think most of the movie was really just about them kind of training, and I believe that he ends up, yeah, I th you know, it was a training exercise, right, where he ends up losing Goose um, in the movie. Uh, I think when they, what was the, what was it that happened there? I'm not sure whether they got hit or an engine blew out or something. And then they just started like spinning out of control and they had to eject and when Goose goes to eject he ends up hitting the uh, canopy above him and it, it, it didn't seem like he was dead at first. I'd forgotten that he was the one that actually died because it had been so long since I'd seen this movie. So yeah, that was kind of a very heartbreaking scene and uh, I think that was kind, kind of broke him a little bit but uh, the... Now, who, the guy above him um, that wanted to, or Viper, 
played by Tom Skerritt. Really wanted to get him back up in the air. Um, and Anthony Edwards played, uh, oh, sorry, Michael Ironside played Jester, who was the one that seemed to always be up in the air with them when they were doing their training. And so, yeah, Viper just kept trying to get him up in the air, although Viper was in part of the training sessions too, I guess. Uh, I'm trying to remember what their final mission was. I believe it was to take down... Yeah, well, what the heck was their final mission in this one? Or was there even a final mission? I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to trying to read anything about an actual mission in this movie, but I don't think there was. I think it was just all training in this movie. And then he just loses his friend Goose and gets back in the plane, and there must have been something at the end of this movie, because my god, it couldn't have all been training, was it? I swear to god I'm remembering a mission in this movie, but... Yeah, because they go back... They go back to where he originally was at the end of the movie, but what was the mission? I'm honestly trying to remember what the mission was. Wow, that's weird, because I just literally watched this Friday night, so how did I forget that already? Because today's only Sunday. Jeez, I might have to go back and watch this again, um, now that I'm thinking about it. But anyway, so he falls in love with the one girl at the base when he goes to Top Gun. Um, Charlie, played by Karen Gillis, and she's not really supposed to fall in love with students, obviously, but uh, she ends up falling for him, and they end up starting a relationship throughout the movie, and then when he loses his friend, he kind of casts everybody aside, I guess. And, yeah, he does prove that he is obviously one of the better pilots, and he mostly pilots the plane by himself, I think, and then he gets another wingman later on in the or another co-pilot later on in the movie but it doesn't seem to be working out very well because he's so taken back by losing his friend that uh yeah he's just not quite the same after that until he can really let it go <clears throat> um so what else can i say i'm really trying to remember what the heck the last mission was i might have to just look this up really quick just to remember what the actual mission was in the top gun movie so i'll be right back Okay, right. I do remember the mission now. So, they went back to the original ship, the Enterprise, and they were, I guess it had uh, coasted into hostile waters, and they had no way of communicating. Now that I'm actually reading it again, because, oh my god, for some reason that just totally slipped my head. So, him and this other pilot, Iceman, are always competing uh, during the Top Gun trials. So they are going for the Top Gun, I guess, medal or trophy or whatever it was uh, that they were, yeah, trophy, the Top Gun trophy uh, that they were going after to prove who was the best pilot in the Academy. Um, and then I guess Iceman ended up proving that because of Maverick being so uh, reckless with his actions. But when they get back to the Enterprise and they actually have to go on the mission to shoot down the MiGs, uh, which are the planes they are fighting, which actually was one of the planes they fought at the beginning when one of the other pilots um, had a meltdown in his plane, basically, and then ends up giving up his uh, wings to the captain on the Enterprise uh, and says he just needs to go home to see his kids because he's never been able to see them, and that was the um, really defining moment of his, just him ending his career because he didn't want to have to end up dying in the air, I guess, which definitely makes sense. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, so the final mission was to shoot down the MiGs to save the Enterprise from being destroyed, obviously, and when Maverick is up there, he has another, like, mental breakdown about, um, Goose dying, because uh, I guess he was in sort of a similar situation when the plane 
when he couldn't control the plane, so he ends up uh, like backing out of the mission, uh, leaving Iceman all by himself to fend off these MiGs, right? Uh, he ends up snapping too, and when they're outnumbered, I believe it was Maverick that ends up taking out like three planes or whatever at the end of the movie, and then him and Iceman end up uh, shaking hands and hugging at the end of the movie because they're they become friends throughout the movie, right? So that was uh, probably one of the much uh, heartfelt moments in the movie, for sure. Um, I don't know why I couldn't, for the life of me, remember what the last mission was, but yeah, I just couldn't for some reason. Anyhow, uh, let's get back into... Yeah, he does shoot down three megs, I was right. I didn't even read that part yet, but yeah, it was three megs that he shot down. Uh, and one thing I wanted to touch on was obviously the soundtrack in this. Uh, we had the Danger Zone song by Kenny Loggins, and you'll understand why I'm touching on that um, in my review of the second movie, obviously. Uh, and then we had... What was a... There was one other song that was always in there during the scenes with him and Charlie. But I'm trying to think of the name of it. Yeah, I remember the tune, I just can't remember the name of the song, but yeah, um, I think it was even in the second one at one point, and the, obviously the song that he sings to her about uh, losing love or something, yeah, you've lost, you've lost a love in you, I think, was ha some, some, some sort of way it went anyway, whatever song he sang to her, and then at the end of the movie, obviously, she comes back when she realizes that all of the pilots are going to be, I guess, stationed at this certain place. So she just knows, she just assumes that he's going to be there, right? So she ends up coming back and they end up uh, reuniting, I guess, because I believe she left for Washington because she got some sort of job in Washington. So, yeah, um, it always seems that the Instead of the guy coming back for the girl, the girl comes back for the guy in these movies. That seems to be the theme anyway, so <clears throat> kind of the roles are reversed, I guess. But anyhow, uh, I gave this movie a, well, let's go back here, a 9 out of 10, just because I thought that it had a very, kind of a slow start to the movie compared to the uh, second one, which I'm about to talk about. Uh, but yeah, still a great movie, obviously a classic. Um... Tom Cruise was fairly young in this. I think it, it was one of his, like, first ever big films. And I don't know how people rated it so low on IMDb, a 6.9. Like, my God, it was probably one of the better movies in the 1980s, I would say. Because, yeah, this was from 1986. I wouldn't really say the rating of it was G. I'd probably rate it more like um, 14A. I mean, maybe back in those times it would have been rated G, but if it came out today, yeah, it wouldn't have been rated G, that's for sure. There was a lot of scenes in here that were, like, not for children. <laughs> let's just let's just say that much. Uh, but other than that, I think that I think I've covered everything now that I can actually remember the last mission. My God. So I hope I've, I hope we've touched on everything. I think I'm going to have to go back and watch this again because I don't know why I just forgot so much of it. Maybe it's just because I've watched so many movies this weekend and they're all kind of blending together. But, yeah, for some reason, the whole last mission just slipped my mind. But, anyway, we figured it out and now I've been able to talk about it a little bit. So, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye for now.